Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we'll be building a broken force field effect. It's a combination of both meshes, particles, and pyrotechnics. So there's a lot to cover. Um, I found it easier just for this one just to go through the setup than to just build it manually. Um, simply because if I was to build, build it starting from scratch It'd probably be an hour long tutorial and I don't think any of you want that. So let's get started. As you can see, I've created my area light and my distant light for lights in the scene. This one's just blue, transformations are this, and this one's just plain old white light placed anywhere in the scene. So in the force field base set up here, I've dropped down a geometry node and just renamed it. And before we dive inside, I've also gone to sampling and it doesn't have any velocity blur on because we're exporting everything we're creating in here into these five separate render nodes. So we dive inside and I started up here with a basic sphere. If we go to the sphere and we turn off hide other objects just for now, we can see that this sphere gets bigger over time and just stops around frame 24. And then clip the sphere so it's half. The geometry is empty, it's not filled. And that doesn't really matter in this case. Over here was where I started the pyrotechnics, so we'll start with that. Um, I've painted the bottom of the sphere all the way, almost all the way around. And it doesn't really matter what you paint, but at the bottom, that's where I want the smoke to be emitted. So that's where I've painted it. With an attribute paint, you can, uh, which is the new kind of paint swap and Houdini 18. All you need to really do is put it down, click enter on the screen, and a brush should appear. Um, if you go over here to attributes, you'll notice that this attribute name will actually be renamed to mask, not CD. So if I was to go to Vector default, it would show mask. Do you want it to show CD instead? Then I've put down a scatter. I've scattered about a thousand points, made sure it's sampling the CD attribute, and the relax iterations are on. I've then placed down a little normal, and this is similar to a different setup that I used where all the um, lines here are pointing into the center. So our normals are exploding outwards, and we've mapped our velocities to our normals, so they're pointing inwards like that. Then I transform this out a little bit, so this is following the expansion of the sphere, which you'll see later. Um, so the keyframes are just on here, and I'll show you in a second what I've done. So I'll skim to both keyframes, and you'll see the positions, or the size of the sphere. You can see it gets smaller, and then bigger bigger. I've added an out for pyro, just so we know where we are. And for the density, this was the settings. And then for the rasterize, it's rasterizing the particles, and it's choosing these attributes and the sizes. And then there's our out density. One way you can, you may notice our dop net over here. If you were to create this manually in Houdini, the stop net would actually be on the object level, but instead it's inside this geometry node. And one way you can do that, where you can automatically generate a pyro simulation inside your object node without having to dive to the surface and then come back in. I'm just going to hit that there so it stops, is by going doing something like this. If you select your emitter, which in this case is our points, expanding outwards, you can drop down a dot net, dive inside, go over to your pyro effects, click billowy smoke, and it should take you to your surface. And it'll ask you to select the surface of your billowy smoke, so you'll click enter. And inside of the dot net should be your billowy smoke. And billowy smoke is the one we're using for the simulation. So it's a regenerated one here, and that's okay. But 
that's how I was able to get the stop net and the density out inside of this note. So I'm just going to click back and I'm going to redo. So if we go to our stop net here, I've made some changes. Uh, one of them being, if we go inside, I've turned off um, our max bounds. So there's no clamping to the uh, bounding box. Haven't really changed anything here. Division size of lower to a 0.02. When you're working with a sim, I recommend maybe keeping it at a 0.09 just because it's easier to sim, uh, sim out or lower. Uh, we'll keep it at a 7 for now so you guys can fully see what's happening in the sim. And then these are the changes I made on the Pyro Solver. On the simulations tab, I've turned down the time scale to 0.9, the temperature fusion to this, and the cooling rate to this. The buoyancy left I've changed to this number, and I've made sure it's emitting in the direction that it's expanding to. So that's why there's a buoyancy direction of 0.4 on the x-axis, simply because it's expanding in this direction on the x-axis. So if you play it back, you'll be able to see what's happening. So you can see expanding there, and that's where our buoyancy direction is taking it. I haven't changed anything here. On the shape, I've turned the dissipation down to this, disturbance, shredding's on, turbulence is on, and the cooling range I haven't really changed either. I haven't changed anything here, and that's pretty much it. For the velocity, I've turned that to, down to 0 0.1, and overall that's just the smoke for the simulation. Pretty simple. So we'll head over here now, and you'll see why I transformed this to expand the way I did in a second. I've added an attribute noise, which is adding CD attributes down, which aren't changing, but it's just placing down color values where we need them. Over here, you can see it's generating points on our mesh, on our expanding sphere, and then there's a pop net over here. And you can see that our pop net is going outwards like that which is really interesting and what this pop net over here and the motion of it matches the transform over here so you can kind of see where they align and um, it might be, you might have to customize this transform based on how your sphere is expanding so don't feel sad if it matches it doesn't match up straight away over here I've scaled the time to 1.5 up the subsets to 2 and in here I've just added frame at equals one, so it's only emitting on frame one. The life expectancy is four, the life variance is 0 0.5. The source birth, it's all points, and it's using the first context geometry. Then this pop attract, what this is, is it, this pop attract is actually getting the points to expand outwards. If it wasn't on, this is what it would look like. But by turning it on, this is what happens. So we'll explore this route over here. I've added a time shift, simply because I don't want any, the movement of the points affecting the next step. And I've added a connected JSON pieces, and I've animated this over time. And this is important to do because if you don't animate it, I'll show you what happens. You have to put down these points and you'll notice straight away that it's all condensed and you can see all these lines. The closer these are together, the more hectic it's gonna be. So that's why you have to animate it. So I'll show you the animated values at one. These are the values around frame 20. Those are the values. Frame 39. And finally, frame 70. So there's barely any pieces left. And then you, I've created the width on these, so they render with a value of 0 0.03. .03. I've converted it into polygons, and I've added a null sane first layer out. So this first layer, is you're, you're going to see in a second, is going to be kind of adding these electrical, kind of fizzy, bright, bright, bright blue lines on our force field. 
and you'll see that later when we put the materials on. So for the second layer, I've gone and added a time shift. I've added our connected adjacent pieces once again. This one isn't animated over time, but it has a constant value of 78 and also 0 0.11. I've added the width, added a convert, and added some color on it so it, the age is remapped into these blue to white tones. So if we play that back over time, it goes something like that. This one, you don't really see too many of the stretchy lines at the beginning, so I felt okay with it. And then I've added a null, which is second layer out. Over here, we are adding particles onto our simulation. So over here, I've added a switch. And basically what this is gonna do is gonna tell the simulation after a certain frame, you have to turn off the particles. So after FF, um, if FF is under 55, the particles will be there. And after that, it will stop. And then it will switch to this null, which has nothing in it. So over here, we've added a pop net. You can see something interesting is happening with this pop net. It's creating these really curved abstract particles. I'll let that play out so you can see it. Kind of cool. If we look at our simulation, we haven't really changed much on top. If we dive inside, we've got our first source first output. For the edge attributes, I've made sure the inherent velocity is a 1.5. For the birth, cranked it up to over 15,000 particles, given a life expectancy of one, and made sure it's on points. For the pop winds, these are the changes that I've made. And down here is where the magic happens. So there's a regular wind force and people don't recommend using these um, simply because using a pop wind is easier to generate noise inside your particles. But these are also fun when you need to generate a more kind of natural line looking appearance or more organic form in your particles. So I've added a scale force of 12, velocity of in the y-axis of 0 0.3 and that makes it pretty much good to go. So over here we've trailed it and the trails I've added connected polygons, turned off closed rows and added a trail length of 23. Now this is where it gets fun. I've added a group down and pretty much anything inside the sphere will be in the group. And I've animated this sphere over time. So you can see that it's only calculating for center of the particles. If we look at here, um, it's snapping the particles inside it and at a certain point it just completely overtakes the particles. Right? So this delete node down here, this delete group one, which we've laid down here, and it's deleting the points inside of group one, so which, which is all the points inside the circle added a width so we can see the lines and then converted the lines to polygons and just add a null that says lines out. So over here we have something similar, the particles. And we play that back and get kind of this explosive look which is similar to what we built over there. If we dive inside we get our source for first input with an inherent velocity of 1.5 this birth is told to shut off at a certain time. So around frame 37, constant activation turns off and the birth rate turns off around frame 39. The source input is points and the pop wind, these are the settings. And that's pretty much it for that side. For the trail, I've added some more particles, essentially at frame 84, there's a trail length of 10, and around here, there's a trail length of just one. So it's just expanding over time, which is fine. Attribute randomize the p-scale of these points. So something really small versus something even smaller. Attribute deleted the color and the position, the ones I didn't, the attributes I didn't need. Added some color down based on the age and then add a null for an extra particles out. So if we zoom to the surface here, we can see some th things start to take effect. For the first layer, I've imported 
our first layer of meshes and then I've cached it out. On this geometry thing I've turned on sampling which is velocity blur and then I've added a glow a material and we'll look at that right now. So these are the settings for the glow layer that I used on our first little layer right here that we can see selected on the yellow lines. So if you zoom back here you'll probably see more of it which is cool. So if you go over here to our second layer, and I'll turn that one off for now, we don't really need to see it. These are our more condensed mesh underneath that. So it's playing back over time, it breaks up around frame 65, and then I've cached it out. So it's just expanding. Once again, I've turned on velocity blur, and I've created a new glow material for that layer which we can see over here. So this is the glow second layer and this is the changes that I made to it. Pyro import, once again, I've gone to import pyro fields because that's what it's rendering and we've cached everything out. Sampling is on and the billowy smoke shader is where the fun bit happens. So we'll go over to our billy, billowy smoke shader and I've turned down the density a little bit and I've gone over to temperature, turned the emission down to one, and these are the color values that I've chosen. You can choose any which one if you'd like. These are the colors. And that's pretty much all the changes I made to that. So our extra particles, these are our um, extra particles that you'll see inside the sim. You can see the color values on them changing over time. And once again, I've cached them out. Added some velocity blur and added a new glow on it. So we'll go back here. And these are the changes that I made. And this one's a little bit interesting because I've animated these ones over time. Uh, well, the color of this, because I wanted around frame 72, the color to be completely black and you don't see get any emission. Around 58, I've made sure the color looks like this. And around frame nine, I made sure the color looks like that. Over by the lines, and these are the lines that we cut off at a certain point. These have expanded outwards. And look kind of very song-ish like. So you can see it's expanding outwards. Don't know why I didn't have my file cache down. I'm going to recache that. Um, so I think something's a little bit off there, so give me a second. Okay, we're back. So we've got our crop particles cached out successfully now. Um, our color we're laying down. This is an age ramp over time. I'm going to turn off our lines, our color, so you can see it. And if we play it back, you can see the color change. So out here it's really white. And you can see some darker elements on our lines. And then there's an out right there. The material for that, I've added the velocity blur and then we've added a glow lines right there. And that hasn't really changed too much. So if we add all these elements together, and we go to our render view, We should see something cool. And there we go. There is our force field-esque alien portal. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Kate, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.